Hi friends, this is Bakapa. In this chapter 2 of Playwright full course, we are going to see what are locators, different types of locators. And then next, we will see how to capture element screenshot, how to take the web page screenshot, and also we will see how to take the full page screenshot. And next, we are going to see how to implement hooks and how to write the preconditions and how to write the post conditions by using the hooks. Next, we are going to see how to add a screenshot into Playwright test report when test got failed. And then we will see how to select the dropdown list value and how to validate the dropdown value. And then we will see how to work with iframes. And then next, we are going to discuss how to select the dates. So it can be today's date or any customized date. Then next, we are going to see how to perform the mouse actions, keyboard actions, and how to drag and drop the element using Playwright. And next, we are going to see assertions. So we will be discussing about the hard assertion and soft assertions in Playwright. Then next, we are going to see what is watch mode and how to enable the watch mode to write the Playwright automation test. And then finally, we are going to see how to enable the traces so that we can attach traces information into the Playwright test report. In this Playwright tutorial, we are going to discuss about locators in Playwright. So there are multiple ways of identifying the web element by using the Playwright. So let's see one by one. The very first one is by role, we can identify the web page element. So this is an example here. You can see that await keyword followed by page dot get by role. So here I have added link. So this can be checkbox or even it can be the button also. And also we have to specify the respective value over here. So this is the name is the constant field. So which we have to add it. And after that, we can perform the respective action. So it can be click on the checkbox or button and uh, we can use the fill also to enter some data into the text box if it is a text box and second one is by label we can identify the web page element the example is very much similar to the above example and in this case we are using the label value that means the wherever you see the tag is having a multiple attributes so within that attributes if you are able to find the area label you can pass that particular value over here and then you can pass the whether you need a partial match or the exact match if you want a exact match you need to pass the true here and then you can perform the respective action it can be click or fill the value into the text box and third one is by using the alt text so here also example is very much same so here you can use the await keyword followed by page dot get by alt text so here so wherever you are seeing the alt attribute then that has the text so that text can be passed over here and then you can perform the action actions whatever it is it can be click or you can enter the some data into the text field and next one is by using the test id for example so by using the test id also we can identify the web page element so this is a very custom attribute this attribute name will be configured in the playwright configuration file so it is very simple guys so this particular attribute name will be configured in the configuration file and then simply you need to pass the respective value over here so this particular configuration will be done only to the field which is very common across the whole project only then you can perform the respective actions and the next one is by using the text you can identify the web page element so if you are using directly by text and if you are not specifying the exact colon true that means that is a partial match and it will perform the actions on the web page element and if you are per, if you are adding the exact colon true so this is the complete match with the text what you are adding inside the get by text method and coming to the next way of identifying the web page element is by using the title so wherever you are seeing the tag is having the 
title attribute simply you can pass the title value over here and so this is a method what we will we will be using to identify the element by using the get by title so title attribute value we have to pass onto this particular function then we can perform the respective actions and the seventh locator type is xpath so in this case so if you see the this particular example right so there's a await and followed by the page dot locator so previously we were using the get by title get by text or get by role or get by test id but in this case when we are using the xpath so we are using only locator so here we have to add the within a double quotes or a single quotes we have to specify the xpath here so this xpath can be added or it can be ignored also so directly you can specify the xpath value also so that is also accepted in the playwright and similarly we have the css selector so we can write the css selector and that can be used as the locator to perform the actions the example is very much similar to the xpath only so we have to use await followed by page dot locator and here we have to pass the css so if you are passing css equal to or simply you can directly pass the even the directly css selector also so so this is not this is an optional value what you can pass onto the css selector and also to the xpath where you are passing the xpath equal to so this is not the mandatory value you need to write into the locator method and coming to the last one by placeholder we can identify the web page element so wherever you are having the placeholder attribute so that value can be passed on to the page dot by placeholder and here once you add the placeholder attribute value over here and you can perform the respective actions so let's see all these examples with respect to the real time web applications let's see the very first example that is by using the role how you can identify the element and uh, how you can perform the actions on the web page element so let's quickly create the one js file inside the tests folder so here i'll say locators dot spec dot js so that's it i will go to the first test dot spec dot js file simply i'll copy this test and i will keep only the skeleton of the test then i will delete the rest of the details and here i will modify the test name so here i'll say locators test that's it so we are using await page dot go to to navigate to the url so i will remove this url and we will use the new url so here i'll say firstly by role so by role we are going to identify the element and then we will perform the actions on that particular element so firstly here i am navigating to the google.com and searching with cypress by testers talk and that's it guys so simply i will take this particular url so this is the url for us and if you see the videos images shopping news so these are the links here so let's click on this particular videos or images or shopping shopping sorry so if i inspect this particular videos right so this is the link guys so you can take an example of any button or checkbox also it will work fine so i'm showing an example with respect to the link how you can use the link to identify the element by using the role so if you see here so this is the anchor tag that means it is a link right so simply i will copy this particular url and then we will click on the this particular videos very first time then we will click on the images so here i am navigating to this particular url by using the page dot go to method and after that so here i am using the await followed by page dot get by role so here we have to pass the firstly we here we have to say whether it is a link or checkbox or button or yeah so these are the few values or a combo box also if you see here so here you can see that some of the 
examples or so. So right now we are adding only link. Here you can see that combo box, checkbox, and there are many other inbuilt value can be passed over here to the get by role. So firstly, I'm passing the link and followed by that, we have to pass the object. So that is the name colon. And in the single quotation, we have to add the videos. Right now, I want to click on this particular videos. This is the link. And then later we will click on the images as well. So that's it guys. Then I will perform the action as click. So let's wait for some time. So after clicking on the videos, so here I will use the await followed by page dot wait for timeout. So here I will pass around 7000 milliseconds. That means seven seconds. That's it guys. Now let's run this particular test and we should be able to click on the videos and I will come back and I will show you what are the different ways of using the get by role. And if you see here, so it has already click, clicked on the videos link. And already it is closed to the browser and also our test is getting passed. Now let's pass the images now. And this time it should click on the images. And if you see here, it has clicked on the images also, right? So this is how you can use the get by role locator. And if I hover my mouse on the get by role, so here you can see the possible examples also. So get by role can be used by using the, you can pass the heading, checkbox, button also. You can pass even the link also. So these are the couple of examples to identify the element by using the get by role. Now let's identify the element by using the area label. So here I'll say label. That's it guys. So what I will do right in this example, let me comment out this particular, let me take this particular first line. We will navigate to the one of the URL firstly. So we will navigate to the google.com. Google and here if I inspect this particular search text box, so which is the text area tag and inside this we have the one attribute called area label. So if you see here, so area, lab, area, area label is equal to search. So we will pass this particular search value inside the get by label function. So I will go back to the VS code and here I will add the URL as google.com and then so we have to identify that element by using the get by label. So here I'll say page dot get by label. So here I'll pass the search as the value. And after that, so here we have to pass the another object also. So here we have to say exact colon true. So I'm finding an element by using the area label, which has the exact search as the value so that's the reason here i'm passing the true so let's enter something in that google search text box so here i'll say api testing by tester stock that's it and once we enter value inside this text box so we will hit the enter by using the keyboard so simply i will take this particular locator and then I will call to the one method called press. So inside press simply I will pass the enter. So this will press presses the enter from the keyboard. That's it guys. So here we are using the get by label and we are passing the value of the area label attribute. That's it guys. So let's run this particular test. So you have seen how you can use the get by role previously and now we are going to see how we can use the get by label also. So I'm showing one way. So if you see here, so it has entered the text and also it has pressed the enter also. We saw the 
results for the required search keywords and if i mouse over on the get label so there are positive different ways of using the get by label also so if you see here so we have the input tag where we have the array label and respective value and second tag where it has a label as the tag name and we have the value as a password and next tag we have the input and we have the id and if you see here down so these are the possible ways of using the get by label and where you are passing the respective just keywords and we are performing the respective actions so this is how we can use the get by role and get by label now let's see how to use get by all text and get by test id so here i will navigate to the web page and here so we need to navigate to the github.com slash backupian so you can take any web page example where you are able to find the alt as the attribute so if i inspect this particular image so we have the one attribute called alt and if you see here so we have the attribute called so we have the attribute and which has the view backupas backupians full sized avatar right so we will use this particular value and we will identify the this particular image and we will click on this particular image by using the get by alt text so here i will navigate to the vs code and so here i will comment out this particular part so which is not required and we are going to identify the element by using the alt text right so firstly we have to navigate to the url so here i'll say page dot go to and here we will add the url and after that we have to identify the element so by using the page dot so get by alt text and inside that we have to simply add the text so here i'll say text added or inside the alt text method and after that we have to click on that particular image that's it so we have performed the click operation here so before that we have to add the url let's copy the url and i have added the url that's it guys it's very simple so wherever you see the alt attribute and which has the value and you can use the get by alt text so i will run the test now so it has opened the browser and it has navigated and if you see here it has clicked on the that particular image also right so it is waiting for some seconds and our test is getting passed also here you can see the check check mark also right so this is how we can use the alt text now let's see how to use the get by test id so here i'll say by test id so here i will navigate to the github dot sorry github dot com followed by that so simply i will pass the login so this will navigate to the sign into github page so if i inspect this particular username text box which has the multiple attributes and respective values so here we are taking the one attribute called auto complete so so whatever the, this particular way of identifying the element if you have seen right so as i said earlier also get by test id so this particular attribute we are going to add it in the configuration file and this particular attribute should be used across the project such kind of attribute can be added in the configuration file so i will go back to the web page once again now so here i'm considering this auto complete is the attribute so which is repeating again and again in my project so i will take this particular attribute and after that i will pass only the respective value wherever i am using the auto complete attribute so let's add this attribute into the our configuration file so it will say test id attribute colon and then in the single quotation simply add the attribute name and put the common that's it 
So once you add this particular test ID attribute into the configuration file, come back to the your test file and here. So let's navigate to the URL first. So here we are navigating to the github.github.com github slash login. So we will enter something in this particular username text field by using the autocomplete attribute value. So here I will enter the URL first and then let's identify the element by using the page dot get by test ID. So we have added the test ID attribute in the configuration file. So that's the reason. So simply I will pass the this particular respective value. So wherever you see autocomplete as the attribute and respective value. So you can use the get by test ID where you can simply pass the respective value. So no need to worry about the attribute name. So then here I'll say fill so I so that I can enter something in the username. So here I'll say tester stock. That's it guys. So we are done with adding the configuration in the playwright configuration file and also we have written the locator for the get by test ID also. So this will open up the github.com login page that's the sign in page and it will add the username value in the field and then it will close as the browser. So if you look at here, so it has added the value which we have passed from the playwright test and it is closing the browser, right? So we are seeing the check mark here and also here we can see the results also. It's working perfectly fine. Now I will discuss how to use the get by text where we can pass the complete text and as well as the partial text. And also we will see how to use the get by title also to identify the web page element. Now let's see how to use the get by text. So here firstly we will navigate to the youtube.com slash at the rate tester stock. So we will use this particular URL and once we come down here, so we have the multiple playlist. So firstly we will use the partial text by using that we will perform the action on the web element. So here I will just use the Cypress by and we will click on the this particular playlist. So if you see here, the complete text is Cypress by tested stock, but we are mentioning just Cypress by. So here I will navigate to the VS code. And so here I'll say by text. And after that, I will use the directly await keyword followed by that. I will use the page and then here I'll say go to Inside this, I will add the URL and after that, we will identify the element by using the get by text. So here I'll say page dot get by text. So here we will add the partial text. So here I'll say only Cypress by and we will click on the playlist. So here I'll say just click operation. That's it guys. Now let's execute the playwright test and we will see the results. So it has navigated to the YouTube link and it has to open the Cypress by tester stock playlist and also it has done that and our test is passing right. So this is this is how you can pass the partial text. Now this time I'm passing the complete text. So here I'm saying Cypress by tester stock. So I will run the same test once again. This time also it opens the YouTube page and it goes to the Cypress by tester stock playlist. And if you see here, so it has clicked on the Cypress by tester stock and it is closing the browser. And if you see here, our test is getting passed. So this is how we can use the get by text where you can pass the partial text or the complete text. Now let's see how to use the title. So here I'll say by using the title. 
So we will navigate to the same URL. So that's the reason I will copy this particular line where we are navigating to the youtube.com slash at the rate tester stock. And if I inspect this particular playlist, Cypress by tester stock. So we have the attributes, multiple attributes. And within that, you will be finding one attribute called title equal to Cypress by tester stocks. So simply copy this particular value. Now we are going to identify the Cypress by tester stock playlist link by using the get by title. So we navigate it to the YouTube link and now we have to identify the element. So here I'm saying page dot get by title. And here I'm adding the value of value of the title attribute and then I'm calling to the function called click. That's it guys. So we are done with writing the simple one line of code. So here we have we are using the get by title and we are performing the click operation. So let's run the playwright, playwright test now. So it has to open the Chrome browser and it has to it has to navigate to the YouTube link and then finally it will navigate to the Cypress by tester stock playlist. And finally it is our test is getting passed, right? So this is working as expected. That's it guys. Now let's see how to use the XPath and CSS selector. So we will navigate to the just youtube.com and here we are going to identify the search text box by using the XPath first. So here I'm using the attribute called name so which has the search underscore query as the value and firstly I will write the to forward slash star and in the square brackets at the rate attribute and followed by the value we have to pass it so this is a simple x path i am writing it and if you see here so it is matching that it is matching with that particular search text box let's copy this particular x path so before that so let's copy the these two lines and here i'll say by x path and I will pass the youtube.com link here. That's a URL. And let's identify the element. So here I'll say wait followed by page. And here I'll say get by. Sorry. So for XPath and CSS selector, we have to use the locator. So here simply you have to pass the XPath equal to the XPath value. We have to pass it. So I will pass this particular X path here. That's it. Firstly, I will click on that particular search text box. And after that, I will pass the search keywords. So firstly, I'm using the click method. And then next, I'm using the fill method to enter the search keywords. So here I'll say JavaScript by testers top that's it guys so after entering the text in the search text box by using the same locator so i will click on i will sorry i will press the enter from the keyboard so here i'm using the one method called press and inside that i'm passing the value as enter so that will press the enter from the keyboard so this will navigate to the youtube.com then it will enter the search keyword and it will press the enter and it will wait for some time and it will close the browser. So this time we are using the XPath to identify the web page element. So as I said just before, XPath equal to is an optional value where you can pass it inside the locator method. And if you see here, so it has navigated to the search results of the YouTube page. And our test is getting passed, right? So this time what I'm doing is simply I will remove this particular XPath equal to 
so this is an optional value you can pass it or you can ignore it and if i run this test then it will work fine so it has entered a javascript by test test talk and it got it got the results also and it is closing the browser and our test is getting passed right in the similar way so what we will do is let's let's add the css selector now so for css selector simply we have to remove the two forward slash and star and add the rate that's it so this is our css selector so i will go back here and i will copy the whole thing and i will comment out these four lines and here i'll say css selector and here i will pass the css selector value that's it guys so i will copy this css selector value so that's it guys we are done with adding the css selector to identify the element by using the css selector now let's run the playwright test and next time we will pass the css equal to value in the locator method so this time we are passing directly css selector value so it has entered the javascript by test test talk and it got the results also and our test is perfectly working fine and here you can pass the css equal to so this is an optional value you can add it or you can ignore it so that's it guys so let's run the playwright test now and it should work fine and if you see here we got the results also and our test is perfectly working fine and if you see here uh, our test is getting passed and here also you can see the check mark here in this playwright tutorial we are going to discuss about how to capture the screenshot in playwright so we will capture the screenshot by using the playwright so it can be the element screenshot it can be the page screenshot or it can be the full page screenshot you will see how to capture the all these screenshot screenshots using the playwright tool so now i will navigate to the vs code and here under the tests folder i am creating one file called screenshots dot spec dot js so that's it guys now i will go to the first test dot spec file and here i will take this test and i will copy the test here so simply i will keep the only skeleton of the playwright test and rest of the details i will delete it and here i will give the test name as take screenshot in playwright and that's it guys now let's look at the manual manual scenario then we will come back here and we will see how to capture the element screenshot and then we will see how to capture the page screenshot and also we'll see how to capture the full page screenshot in playwright automation tool so here i will navigate to the web browser so firstly we will open the youtube.com slash at the rate tester stock so here we have a one element called channel header if i inspect this particular channel header so we are going to identify this channel header and we are going to capture the element screenshot so you can identify any element in the web page and you can try to capture the screenshot so if i inspect this particular channel header and if you see here so this particular div tag has the id so i'll copy this particular id and here i'm just using the hash followed by the id value so here i have written a simple css selector and by using this we can 
identify the element and then we can see how to capture the screenshot in playwright so let's navigate to this url first and i'll copy this url and i will enter the url here so that's it guys now we have to identify the channel header element first so here i'm using await keyword followed by page dot so here i'll say locator and inside the locator function i will pass the css selector value that's it once we pass the css selector value over there and simply you need to call the one function called screenshot so here we have to pass the one object that is the location of the file so let's create a one folder inside our project so here i'm creating one folder called screenshots so we will keep all the screenshots inside the screenshots folder so firstly we will keep the element screenshot inside the screenshots folder so here we have to specify the path so here i'm saying path colon in the single quotation so i'm adding dot slash and the folder name screenshots and followed by that we have to specify the screenshot name so here i'll say element dot png so that's it guys so firstly we have identified the element by using the css selector and here we are adding the location where we want to capture the screenshot and also we are adding the screenshot name as element dot png so that's it guys and finally i will add some weight here by using the await followed by page dot wait for timeout so here i'll pass 5000 milliseconds and that's it guys under the screenshots folder right now we don't have anything so after running the this particular automation test so it is going to capture the screenshot of the web page element and also it will keep inside the screenshots folder that's it guys and if you see here so our test is getting passed i will go to the screenshots folder and if you see here so already it has captured the element screenshot and also it has added inside the screenshots folder so let's go to the location where exactly it has placed so simply i will open the screenshot and if you see here so playwright has captured the element screenshot right so this is how you can capture the web page element screenshot now let's see how to capture the page screenshot so it is very easy so we have to use the await keyword followed by page so i don't want to capture the particular element screenshot here so i want to capture the current page screenshot so that's the reason directly i'm calling the screenshot method and here again we have to pass the location of the file where we want to keep the screenshot also so simply i will copy the same location and we will update the file name so here i will give the screenshot name as page.png so our screenshot name would be the page so that's it guys let's run the test now so this time playwright will take the current page screenshot that's it guys and if you see here so our test is passing and if you see the screenshots folder so we have the another screenshot called page.png got added so let's go to the location so let's open the page screenshot and if you see here so playwright has captured the current page screenshot so this is how you can capture the screenshot of the element or the current page now this time we will capture the full page screenshot so it is very much similar whatever the syntax what we have used for the capturing the screenshot of the current page and here we have to pass the another object called so that's another flag so here we have to use the full page colon and here we have to pass the 
true or false so here i'm passing the true as the value so that it is going to capture the full page screenshot and i will give the name of the screenshot as full page dot png so that's it guys now i will run this particular test now this time we are going to capture the full page screenshot using playwright tool and if you see here so our test is passing and you can see the test results also so our test is getting passed and if you see the screenshots folder so there is another screenshot added in the same location full page.png so let's go to the location and if i open that particular screenshot so if you see here so this is a full page screenshot so currently the page is not loaded and you can try to scroll down and you can take the full page screenshot that time the whole page will be visible properly so this is how you can capture the element screenshot page screenshot full page screenshot using playwright in the next playwright tutorial i will be discussing how to capture the screenshot and how to add into the report when test is failed in this playwright tutorial we are going to see how to take a screenshot and how to add the screenshot into the playwright test report when test failed so let's navigate to the vs code now so here i will open one of the spec file called first test.spec.js file so i will simply run the this particular test so this is a currently working test so our test will pass so it will not capture the screenshot and even if it is failed also it will not capture the screenshot and add into the playwright test report and we will see how to do that so if you see here our test is getting passed and if i open the html report so you will be not seeing any screenshot here so whenever test is getting passed or failed also so if i scroll down so there is a no screenshot and our test is getting passed so now i will make intentionally this test getting failed so i'll make this test failure so it will pass the incorrect expected value so our test will fail now because actual value and expected value is not matching so once our test got failed so this time also it is not going to capture the screenshot and if you see here so our test is getting failed where it is not able to match the actual and expected value so let's go to the report and let's refresh the report and if you see here so this is the expected string and this is the actual string so it is not matching both the strings and if i scroll down you'll be not finding any screenshot here and here you can see that where exactly our test got failed also so let's see how to add the screenshot into the playwright test report when test is getting failed so here i will go to the playwright.config.js file and under the defined config so i will come down so there is another object called use inside this we have to add the one flag called screenshot colon and here we have to pass the value as only on failure that's it guys so this is the very simple configuration you need to do it in the playwright config file now i will go back to the our vs vs code test here that's the first test dot spec file and i will rerun the test so this time our playwright will capture the screenshot and also it will add the screenshot into the playwright test report so whenever the test is getting failed and if you see here our test is getting failed i will go to the report again then i will refresh the page so our test is getting failed so because of expected string and received strings are not matching and if i scroll down here you can see the step 
and also you can if I, if I scroll down a little bit down so here you will be seeing the screenshot section under the screenshots you'll be finding the screenshot where exactly play array test is getting failed so this is how you can capture the screenshot and this is how you can add the screenshot into the playwright test report in this playwright tutorial we are going to see what are hooks and how to implement hooks in the playwright framework so let's understand what are hooks so hooks are nothing but the block of code and that will be getting executed before executing your tests or after executing the your tests so these are the four hooks we have in the playwright tool the very first one is before each second one is before all third one is after each and fourth one is after all so let's understand what exactly each hooks does we have the before each so that name itself says that this particular block of code will be executing before each test and coming to the next one before all so this is a function so it will contain the block of code that block of code will be getting executed before executing all your tests and coming to the third one and fourth one so these two are exactly opposite to the before each and before all so after each is nothing but so this block of code will be executed after executing the each test and coming to the final one after all so this is a function it contains the block of code and that will be getting executed after completing the all the test execution so let's see how to implement hooks in the playwright so i will navigate to the vs code now so here i'm creating a one spec file inside the tests folder hooks dot spec dot js that's it guys so i will go to the one of the spec file called first test dot spec dot js file and i will copy the all the code from the this particular spec file and i will come inside the hooks dot spec dot js file so here i have copied the first test spec dot js file test into the hooks dot spec dot js file so let me explain what exactly this test is doing and we will update the test name later so firstly we are navigating to the youtube youtube.com then we are searching with cypress by tester stock so that means we are entering this particular text in the search text box then we are clicking on the search icon so and once we got the results we are clicking on the playlist and the, then we are validating the title of the web page so that's it guys at high level so here i will rename the test name as hooks in playwright so that's it guys so if you see here if i'm having right now i'm having only one test and if i need to write the 10 automation tests like this so i need to use the await followed by the page dot go to so this precondition is required for each and every test case that means launching the browser and entering this particular url so i don't want to write it in the all the 10 automation tests so i want to keep it in only in single place so that will be used across the all the tests so that's the reason what i'm doing is simply i will cut this particular part and i will place it inside the one hook called before each so let's implement the before each now so here i'm using the test object and here i will add the test dot before each so here we have to say which hook we are using then here i'm adding the name of this function as run before each test that's it and followed by this i'm using the async async function so here i'm adding the page object and followed by that so i am using the arrow function that's it guys so simply i will paste the code which is launching the browser and entering the url right so now i will run the test so now this time also it should work fine so let me run the test now
and if you see here it has opened the browser and also it is entering the url and also it is navigating to the playlist and it is validating properly and if you see the test results also our test is getting passed right now so here i will add one log that's a console dot log and here i'll add the message as running before each test that's it guys so this is how you can implement the before each test or some data you want to clean up or some data you want to create it so those kind of functionalities can be implemented inside the before each now let's let's implement the before all also so it is very much similar so here in here we have to replace this before each with the before all and here i'll say before all test and i'm not doing anything inside the before all so simply i'm writing the one simple message called running before all test that's it guys say for example if you are having test data which you want to read it from the different sources it can be the csv file excel file json file so that data can be loaded inside the before all hooks so if i run the test so this particular block of code will be getting executed before running any of the test so as of now we have only one test so we will try to use the sorry guys so we should not use the page object here sorry guys so we should not use the page object inside the before all so let's remove that and let's run the test now and we will add the same test once again then we will have the two automation tests so it is able to navigate to the url and it is performing all the actions properly and our test is getting passed also so i will take the same test and i will create a second test and i will remove some of the actions here so simply it will navigates to the youtube.com and it searches with the cypress by tester stock so instead of cypress by tester stock here i'll say api testing by tester stock this time and here i will say the test name as hooks in playwright 2 so that's it guys so right now we are having to total two tests so before running this particular test so our browser should get launch and before running the second test also it should launch the browser and it, and it should perform all the actions so here i'm going to the testing and then i will run the hooks spec file so far we have implemented before each and before all hooks in the playwright and let's quickly implement the after each and after all hooks also so firstly it is searching with the cypress by tester stock and second time so it has to search with api testing by tester stock and if you see here so it is able to search the search with the second set of search keyword and if you see here our two tests are working fine so as i said before after each and after all so those two hooks are exactly opposite to the before each and before all so here i'll say after each and i will update the description and also i will update the log also so here i am not doing anything inside the before sorry after each hook also and here i'll say after all and same thing i will update inside the console.log say for example if you want to clean up the data or if you want to close the con connection with the external external sources so those kind of things can be written inside the after each and the after all so if i execute this particular test right so let me trigger the whole test and we will go back to the report and we will see in which order all the hooks are working and also we'll see how the tests are getting executed also 
so firstly it will work the before all and then before each then test then after each and after all so this is a usual order playwright test will work when we are using the hooks in the playwright so if you see here so all the two tests are working fine so let's go to the report and if you see here so our tests are working fine so i will go down and i will click on the std out so if you see here so firstly it is running the before all test then before each test and after that running after each test so this is a very first test that's the reason after all test is not got executed so if i go to the test 2 so this is a test which got executed last and if i go to the std out so here you will be able to see the firstly before each test then after each test then at last it is running the after all the test right so this is how you can implement the hooks in playwright in this playwright tutorial we are going to see how to handle drop down list in playwright there are two ways we can select the any drop down value the first one is by using value we can select the drop down list and second one is by using visible text we can select the any drop down value so let's see the manual scenario first and then we will perform all these actions practically and at the end we are going to see how to verify the drop down value so you can verify the default value or you can verify the even selected value as well so let's look at the manual scenario first so we will navigate to the facebook.com and then we will click on the create new account and then so we will come here so we will select any value from the month drop down list and also we will validate the default value and also we will validate the any selected value after the selecting it from the drop down list so let's navigate to the vs code now let's quickly create a script so let me close all the windows so under the tests folder so i'm creating one file called drop down list dot spec dot js so that's it so i will go to the first test dot spec file simply i will copy the test here and i will come to the drop down list spec file so simply i will delete the some lines of code which are not required so here i will keep only skeleton of the playwright test and here i will update the test name as handle drop down list in playwright so that's it firstly we have to navigate to the one url so here i will add the url by using the go to method so i will navigate to the facebook.com so once we navigate it once we navigate to the facebook.com so we have to identify the one element called create new account so i will use the visible text by using that we will identify this button and we will we will click on the create new account so here i'll say get by text and i will pass the text that is the create new account then i will call the method called click so that will perform the click action so once we navigate it to the pop up that's the alert so here we have to identify this particular drop down list that's the month so i will inspect the month drop down list and if you see here so this particular select tag has the array label name id so here i will use the id and by using the id so simply i'll say hash and followed by the id value so i have written a simple css selector and i'll copy this css selector and here what i will do is simply i will use the page dot locator then i will add the locator here then i will assign back to the one constant variable called drop down 
list. So that's it. So by using this element, I can select the any value from this particular drop down value. So let's see by using the value how we can select the drop down list. So if I navigate to the DOM details of the month, and if you see here, so for the Jan value is one, for Feb it is a two, and if I scroll down, for May it is five, for June it is a six. So let us select the May. So simply I will pass the value as five, and here I will use the drop down list dot select option. And simply I will pass the value because I want to select the May now. So that's the reason here I'm passing the 5. That's it. And here I will provide some weight so that we can see the execution properly. So here I'll say wait for timeout. And here I'll pass 5000 milliseconds. So by default, our web page is selecting the December as the month. And our test will select the May. So I will run the test now. So it is navigating to the facebook.com and then if you see here, May got selected and our test is working fine. If you see here, so we got the check mark and also we got the test got passed. So this is how you can select the drop-down value using the playwright. So let's try to select the June this time. So I will pass the six here. So if you see the DOM details, so for, to select a June, we have to pass the value as six. So that's the reason I'm passing the value as six here and I will run the test. And if you see here, June got selected and our test is perfectly working fine, right? So these are the two examples what we have seen how to select a drop down using the value. So this time what I will do is I will pass the visible text. Say for example, I want to select August. So simply I will pass the August here. So previously we were passing the value, but this time I'm passing the visible text. So if I run the test, so at the end of the test, it will select it, it is going to select the August as the month from the drop down list. And if you see here, August got selected. So this is how you can select the drop down value using value and visible text in Playwright. Now let's see how to verify the drop down value. So for example, if I after navigating to facebook.com and then once we click on create new account. So default value is December. For December, if I inspect in the DOM, so let's check the value of the December. So it will be 12, right? So let's, ins sorry, let's assert this particular value, whether December is getting selected or not, we will verify it. So here, what I will do is after navigating to this particular web page, then here I will assert the before selecting anything in the drop down list. So I'm going to assert the December as the value. So here I am using the await followed by, as I said previously, we have to use the expect keyword and followed by that we have to use the element. And then here we have to say to have value. And here we have to pass the value. That's it. So by default value is 12 this time. So that's the reason here I'm passing 12. And if I run the test and this will work fine. So basically we are checking the default drop down value is correctly displaying or not. So this time our test will work fine. Because December is the month by default it is getting selected. Let's say if I pass and this time our test will get failed. So you can assert even the after selecting the any drop down value in the similar way. So I have showed you how to validate the default value. So default selected drop down value. And if you see here, 
so we have the assertion failure here the expected string is 2 but we have received the 2 well as the string so this is the expected failure so this is how you can select drop down values in playwright and also how this is how you can validate the drop down values in this playwright tutorial we are going to discuss how to handle iframes and also i am going to discuss about how to drag and drop elements in playwright so let's navigate to the web browser we will see the manual scenario first so we will navigate to jquerryui.com slash droppable first then here if i if you scroll down so here we have two elements one is drag me to target so this is a source element and drop here is a destination element so simply we can take this source element and we can drop inside the destination element so this is a scenario overall scenario guys so i will go to the vs code let's create a playwright test now under the tests folder i am creating iframe then drag and drop dot spec dot js that's it guys then i will go to the first test spec file so here i will copy the test and i will come back to the iframe drag and drop spec file so here i will keep the only skeleton of the playwright test and here i will update the test name as handle iframes in playwright and i'll say here drag and drop so that's it guys so firstly we have to navigate to the url so here i'm using go to method by using that we will open the browser and we will navigate to the this url that's it now if i go to the web browser and let me refresh this page so i will open the dom details now so if you if i inspect the source element and this is a destination element below one is and if i go a little bit up here so here we have the iframe first firstly we have to identify the iframe and then we have to switch to this particular iframe then we can perform actions on the elements which are there inside the iframe so let's identify the iframe now so here we are having the class equal to demo hyphen frame so i will take this particular value class value and simply i will press dot and the value so we are able to identify the iframe by using the css selector so here i will copy the css selector and i'll come down here i'll say firstly we will find the iframe then we will find the drag and that is the source and destination element then finally we will perform the drag and drop the element so that's it guys it is very simple now let's identify the iframe now so here i will use the if sorry await sorry i will not use the await here so directly i will use the page dot so here i'll say frame frame locator and inside the frame locator method i will pass the frame whatever we have written the css selector to identify the iframe then i will assign back to the constant variable called iframe element so that's it guys so we have identified the iframe now now we have to identify the source and destination element and once we are having source and destination element directly we can drag and drop the element into the destination side so let's identify the source element now so here i will inspect the source element so if you see here this particular div tag has the id so that's the reason id equal to draggable so i will simply use this id equal to draggable and i will write the simple css selector and i will remove the double quotes i will put the single quotes 
that's it guys so we are able to identify the source element right so it is highlighting the source element to identify this particular drag that's a source element draggable element so this I, this element is present inside the iframe so that's the reason i will use the this particular iframe element after that i am going to use the locator method so firstly we have to switch to this particular frame by using this frame we are going to find the source and destination element and then we can perform the action so here i'm saying iframe element so we are using the frame then we are locating the element that is the source element so here i'm adding the source element locator value then i'm assigning back to the constant variable called here let's say drag element in the similar way let's identify the destination element that is a droppable element so here let's say drop element and here we will replace the id so i will go to the web page and if i come come down here so it is highlighting the respective drop element so simply i'll take this id of the drop element and i'll add it here that's it guys so we have the iframe and we have the source and destination elements now it is very easy we can directly drag and drop the element so we can use the await followed by so here i'm using the drag element first and followed by that i'm calling one method called drag to and inside this we have to simply pass the drop element that's it guys so we are done with most of the work here so i will give some weight here so here will say page dot wait for timeout so that's it guys now our test is ready now i will run the test now so it is very simple we have opened the url then we have identified the frame then source and destination elements then we are simply dragging and dropping the element if you see here so this is perfectly working fine so we are able to drag the source element into the destination side so we are able to drop the element in, element into the destination element and also you can see here our test is perfectly working fine and our test is getting passed right so this is how you can handle the iframes in playwright and also this is how you can drag and drop the element in playwright in this playwright tutorial we are going to see how to perform the mouse actions using playwright tool so let's navigate to the web browser and let's look at the scenario so we will navigate to the google.com and here i will search with tester stock and i will take the some part of the url so i will take this part of the url so we will enter this particular url and we will do firstly just normal click double click and right click from the mouse middle button click from the mouse and left button click from the mouse and also we will see how to hover the mouse on the elements also so if i hover my mouse here on the wise so it is displaying the some text search by wise so if i hover on the image so it is saying search by image like that so at the end we will see how to hover the mouse on the particular element so now i will navigate to the vs code and we will use this particular url and here i'm creating one simple spec file under the tests folder so here will say mouse actions dot spec dot js file so that's it i will go to the first test dot spec file and here i'll copy this test and i will keep only the skeleton of playwright test and here i will modify the test name as mouse actions in playwright that's it guys
so let's enter the url here first so i will go to the browser and i will take the url and then i'll come back to the vs code now so here i have entered the url so let's do the very normal click and double click so these are the generic clicks what we will do so here it'll say just click and then we have a double click so we'll see one by one how to do all these and here i'll say mouse right click and in the similar way we have the mouse middle button click and then we will perform the left button click from the mouse and at the end we are performing the mouse hover so these are the things we will be doing it in couple of minutes so that's it guys now so let's perform a perform a normal click so here i will go to the page so let's identify this particular tester stock link by using the get role so here i will go to the vs code so here i will use await keyword followed by page dot and here i'll say get by role so here i will mention as a link by using the link text we are going to identify the element then i will pass the object and inside the object i will pass the value as tester stock that's it guys now so there might be n number of n number of matches to the our link text so that's the reason so if you look at this particular search results so there can be a number of matches so that's the reason here i'm calling one function called first so this will focus on the only very first element then i will say the regular click method that's it guys so i will put some weight so that we can see the execution at the end of the test so here we'll say wait for timeout so here i'll add some seconds so that's it guys now let's verify whether we are able to perform the normal click so i will run the test now so it is launching the browser and it is entering the url and it should click on the test stock and it is navigating to the test stock channel and if you see here so our test is perfectly working fine so this is how you can perform the our regular click or the normal click so i will take the same locator and we will see how to perform the double click on any element using playwright so previously we have called click function now we have to call the db dbl click so that's it guys so that means a double click so now we are double clicking on this particular test tester stock link so here i will run the test once again so dbl click is nothing but the double click so if you see here it is navigating to the youtube channel and finally it is closing the browser so this is how you can perform the double click now let's see how to perform the mouse right click so we will take the same element so basically i'll take the same element here and then if i go to the web browser so simply we will right click on this particular link like this right so i will go back here and so here i'm calling one method called click so inside the click method so here i'm passing as button so instead so we have to pass the object guys not directly button we can pass it so inside the object we can pass the button colon then here we can pass the values inside this so firstly let's perform the right click from the mouse so simply you need to pass the right and this is going to right click on the element by using the mouse so let's run the test now
and if you see here so it has performed a right click on the web page element and then it is closing the browser and if you see here so our test is getting passed right now let, let's take the same line of code and simply we have to pass the different value to the click method so firstly we have clicked on the element that means we have performed a right click on the element now this time we are going to perform the middle click so here i'll pass as middle that's it guys so i will go to the web browser and if i do the middle click middle click on the web page element so this is going to open the next tab like this right so let's verify this whether it is properly performing the action or not so let's run the test now so we are performing the middle click and if you see here it has opened the another tab so it has opened that particular particular link in the second tab so that's it guys and if you see here our test is perfectly working fine so this is how we can perform the middle button click from the mouse now this time we will perform the left button click from the mouse so simply here we have to pass the different value so here we have to pass the left as the value to the button so that means we are passing the object to the click method so that's it guys now i will run the test and this time it will perform the left button click from the mouse so it is basically it navigates to the channel so that's how it is and that's it guys and if you see here so our test our test is getting passed now let's see the final one how to hover on the any web page element let's say for example i want to mouse hover on any of these elements right so let's inspect this particular element and we will do the mouse hover on the element so i'm inspecting search by wise so if you see here so we have the div tag and under that we have the area label equal to search by wise so simply i will take this particular attribute and value and i'll paste it here that's it guys and we are able to identify the element by using the css selector that's attribute equal to value simply i will take this css selector and i'll come down here so here i'm using await keyword so we are going to identify the element now so i will use the page dot locator and here we have to pass the locator value whatever we have identified it so that's it guys so we have identified the element now i'm calling one method called hover so this function does the mouse hover on the web page element so that's it guys so if you see here so whenever you open the page normally so this particular text will be not displayed only if you hover on the page element then it will display the text as search by wise right now let's run the test and see the results and if you see here guys so it has performed the action because i have used my mouse just i was rolling my mouse so that's the reason that text got disappeared so let's run the same test once again i will not do anything this time and you will be seeing the text as search by wise if you see that search by wise is displayed so this is how you can perform the mouse hover on any element using the playwright in this playwright tutorial we are going to see how to perform keyboard actions in playwright so i will show you a couple of examples over here so we can perform many actions from the keyboard and if you see here so there are multiple options so very commonly used uh, actions from the keyboards are pressing backspace tab enter escape and you can also press the enter insert page down page up and also you can press the functions from f1 to f12 and also you can press the digits from the keyboard and also we can press keys from a to z as well so like this there are many actions we can do it from the keyboard 
So let's see a couple of examples in the VS code now. So here I will quickly create a one spec file. So here I'll say keyboard actions dot spec dot js. So that's it. So I will go to one of the spec file and I will copy the test. And here I will keep only the skeleton of playwright test. So that's it guys. So let's update the test name as keyboard actions in playwright. So that's it. Now let's discuss the manual scenario what we are going to do it in few minutes. So firstly I will navigate to the google.com and we will identify this search text box. Then we will fill some data over here and by using the keyboard we will hit the enter first. So let's perform this action first. So let's copy the URL now. Here I will go and I will add the URL inside the go to method and let's identify the search text box. So here I'm using the one attribute called area label equal to search. So simply I will add the square brackets. So inside the square brackets, I will add the attribute name and attribute value. So here I'm trying to add the single quotation. In between the single quotation, I'm adding the value. So we are able to locate the element, right? So let's copy that element. And here, so I'm using the, so let's add the steps here. Firstly, we will press the enter. So it will say press enter. And then we'll say control plus A, sorry, so control plus all. So we will see how to press the control plus A. Sorry, let me add here press control plus A and also we'll see how to press tab also and also we will see how to press the delete from the keyboard. So these are the couple of examples we will be seeing in few minutes. So I will identify the element first here I'll say wait for followed by that page dot here I'll say locator and inside that I will add the locator value what we copied it from the Google page and firstly I will perform the click operation. So I want to click on that search text box firstly then we will enter something in the search text box. So here I'm adding playwright by tester stock. So that's it. Now let's verify whether this test is working fine or not. Then finally I will use uh, await followed by page dot here I'll say wait for timeout. So here I will give some some seconds. So after completing the test, so it will wait for some time. So let's see whether this test is working fine or not. Then we will see how to press enter, how to press control A, how to press delete and how to press the tab also. It looks like it is not working. So let's see what is the issue also. So I will navigate to the VS code. Still it is running. And if you see here, sorry so here we have given the press so here we have to call the method called fill so that is the reason so our test got failed now this time we should be able to open the google.com and we should be able to enter the some value in the search text box and if you see here so we are able to enter the playwright by tester stock great so now let's see how to press the enter from the keyboard so I will take this locator and followed by that. So here I'm calling one calling to the one method called press and inside the press I'm passing the value as enter. 
because I want to press enter from the keyboard. So that's the reason I'm passing the enter value. So you can pass any value from the this particular list, right? So it will be acceptable value. So right now I'm pressing the enter. So once I add the text here, let's say playwright by tester stock. If I press enter from the keyboard, we got the search result here, right? Now let's see this test, whether it will fetch the results or not. So I'm running the test now. If you see the results here, so we are able to fetch the results after pressing the enter. So here I will be doing a very small modification. So after the web element locator value, I'm calling one function called first and same thing I will do it for the line number 10. Also in the line number 13 also. So why I'm doing this particular, why I'm adding this particular statement is, so if it is this particular locator is matching with multiple elements and it will perform on the way perform the action on the very first element. So that's the reason here I'm saying identify the first element and perform the action. That's what I'm saying here. So that's it guys. We know how to press enter from the keyboard. Now let's see. So after pressing enter, right? So if I close this particular inspector, so what I will do is next action. So we will use the control plus A and also we will use the delete. So in this scenario, again, I will click on the this text box. I will select all the text and then I will delete it from the keyboard. That's it guys. So this is the action what we are doing it now. So firstly, we have to click on the text box. So that's the reason I'm copying the line number nine, which is clicking on the search text box. Then we have to press the control A from the keyboard. So that's the reason I will copy this particular part where we are performing the enter. So here I'm passing the value as control plus A. So this will select the all the text which is there in this particular search text box. That's it guys. Once we are able to select the text which is there inside the text box, simply we can delete it by using the delete. So here I'm right now I'm passing the delete as the value for the press. So this is going to delete the value whatever we selected by using the control A. That's it guys. Our scenario is very simple. So firstly, we have entered the search text box and after that we are pressing enter from the keyboard. And again, we are selecting the same text box here. Then we are selecting all the text which is there inside the text box. Then finally, we are deleting that text. Now let's run the test and see the results. If you see here guys, everything got cleared. So, and if you see the output also, our test is perfectly working fine, right? So this is how you can use the control A that selects all the text. And also we are deleting the selected text. Now let's see how to press tab. So the scenario is very simple guys. So I will go to the google.com. So already we have identified this search text box. Firstly, we will click on this search text box. And after that, I'm pressing one tab. And after that, the after pressing the tab, cursor is going on to the search by voice, right? And if I hit enter from the keyboard, it is going to open up the one alert, right? So let's perform this particular action. We will see how to use the tab and enter also. So right now I will comment out the line number 10 and line number 13 and line number 16, 17 and 18. So that's it guys. So we have opened the google.com and we have clicked on the search text box and now we have to press tab and enter. So here I'm using the await 
keyword followed by the page dot keyboard because already we are clicking on the text box here so directly we have to click the tab and then we have to press the enter from the keyboard so that's the reason here i'm saying press so firstly we have to press the tab so that's the reason here i'm passing tab and followed by that we have to press the enter as well and then i will press the enter so that's it guys so i will give a little bit more weight so we are done with how to implement or how to use the tab and enter from the keyboard in a playwright automation tool so let's run the test now and if you see here so we got the alert which we expected it so it will wait for some time and if you see here our test our test is getting passed and also here you can see the check mark so this is how you can use the all the keyboard actions in the playwright in this playwright tutorial we are going to see how to work with the date picker so i will be discussing how to select the today's date and how to select the custom dates as well from the date picker field so let's navigate to the browser we will see the scenario and then we will come back to the vs code and we will create the spec file and we will create the playwright test so we will navigate to the this particular url jquery ui.com slash date picker so here we have the one field called date and where we can select the any dates right so this is the scenario what we are going to automate it in few minutes so let's navigate to the vs code and here i'm creating quickly one spec file as a date picker dot spec dot js so that's it so i will copy the one of the test and i will come back to the date picker dot spec file and i will delete the respective code here i need just the skeleton of the playwright test and here i'm updating the name of the test as date picker in playwright so that's it guys so firstly we will navigate to the url so here i will add the url first and once we navigated to the specified url we have to identify the this particular element so this element is present inside the iframe if i inspect the element so we have the one iframe firstly we have to switch into this particular iframe and then we can perform the action on this particular date field element so let's identify the iframe first so we have the class equal to demo frame so simply i will take the class value and here i'll say dot followed by class value so we are able to locate the iframe and simply i will copy the iframe now so we have the iframe locator name and here i'll say page dot so here i'll call to the one function called frame locator so firstly we have to switch into this particular frame then i will assign back to the one constant variable called frame element so we have the frame now by using this frame i can perform the any action on this particular date field element right so let's inspect the date field now and if you see here which is a which has the input tag and it has the respective attributes and values so i am identifying this element by using the class value simply i will copy the class value again i will put the dot and i will add the class value so if you see here so we are able to locate the date field so let's copy the locator now 
so here i will use the frame element followed by locator so let's add the locator value here then simply i will use the fill so here i can pass the date format so let's see with which format of date is this field is accepting now so if i select today's date so it is accepting month followed by date and year so let's pass the any date here so let's pass 22 or let's pass 20 sorry first we have to pass the 12 that's a month followed by date let's pass 20 as a date and followed by the year so that's it guys so we are done with identifying the frame and by using the frame so we are going inside the frame then we are identifying the date picker field and we are selecting the date in that field so i will put some weight so that we can see the execution properly so that's it guys so this is a one way guys how we can select the custom date and next we will see how to select the today's dates uh, today's date so we don't know like what will be the today's date right so dynamically how to select the date you will see after executing this test so this is the very simple way how we can select any custom date so it can be today's date you can pass it or you can pass the if it's here so we are able to select the 1220 and 20, 2023 and if you see here our test is getting passed so this is the one way of selecting the date from the date picker so let's look at the second way how we can select the dynamically today's date so i will go back to the web page now i will refresh it once again i will inspect the date field so if you see here so today date is 2022 so i i have clicked on this particular input box firstly and then i'm going to inspect the today's date so if you see here this particular td tag followed by the we have class and if you see the class value right which is ending with ui date picker today and if i inspect the next date or even previous date so this particular td tag and followed by the class does not have the whole value whatever we have seen in the today's date tag right so if you see here the above one which has the different value together right all together so this is a very unique value which will be there if it is the today's date so let's identify the element by using the class so firstly let's click on the this text box then we will get the calendar then we will select the today's date by using the class so here i'm firstly using this particular locator so previously we have used to enter the data now i'm using the same locator then i'm simply calling the method called click so this will clicks on the date field text box then now we have to identify the identify the today's date so if it is let's say today is 22 so it will select the 22 if i execute tomorrow if it is 23 it will select the 23 because based on the class value we are going to, we are going to identify the element so simply i will press ctrl f find followed by that there will say dot value if you see here so it is highlighting the respective element on the calendar right so today date is 22 let's copy this ins inspected value and here i will use the await followed by then i will say frame locator dot locator and then i will pass the css selector and here i'll say just click on that date that's it guys so this time so our test should select the today's date that's the 22 date let's run the test and see and after this test 
we will see the next way of if you see here guys so it has selected the 1222 and if you see here our test is getting passed right so so these are the two ways of selecting the date picker so there is another way also so that is the another way of selecting the custom date value so let's see how to select the custom date value so based on the today's date for example today date is 22 say for example i want to select the three days back date that is a 19 date or say for example i want to select future date i want to select after four days date so like this custom date can be selected by using the, this particular approach so let's see what is this approach so simply i will take this particular locator we have written to identify the today's date right so if i put this particular locator so it is highlighting the sorry guys so let me refresh the page once now let's add the locator so if you see here so it is highlighting the today's date so if i go inside the td tag we have the another tag called anchor tag so i will put one arrow and here i'll say r a anchor tag so right now it is highlighting the this particular today's date anchor tag and if you see the details of this anchor tag so there is a one attribute called data hyphen date which has the exact value of the today's date right so we will get this particular date by using this we can add the days or we can sub subtract the days and based on the result we can select the custom date so now i what i will do is simply i will take this particular css selector and here i am using the frame element dot locator and here i will add the locator value so i will save back to the con constant variable called default date so that's it guys so once i'm having the locator by using this one so i will get the data hyphen date value by using the get get attribute so here i'll say get attribute and inside this we have to specify the attribute name as data hyphen date so this returns me the 22 right now so i will assign back this to the another variable called here i will say let and i'll say date value so that's it guys now once we are having the so let me add it as a current date value so once we are having the current date value so we will simply perform some arithmetic operation let's say for example i want to select the three days back date so i will take this current date value and here i'll say so i'll put the brackets and then here i will say three that means it it is going to return me the 19 as the value and once the operation is done then here i will convert back to the integer so here i'll say percent so that's it guys so i will put the brackets and i will assign back to the one variable called custom date so here i'll say const and variable name is custom date so that's it guys it's very simple now so once we are having the custom date so right now this is going to return me the 22 as the as a value and then here we are doing the calculation and this calcul calculation returns me the 19 as value right so now what i will do is so here i'm creating one locator as so here i will say element so what i'm doing is uh, here i'm writing a simple css selector guys so the css selector is very simple bracket open bracket data hyphen date 
and followed by that I need to pass the so this particular custom date over here so that it will matches to the respective data date say for example I want to select 23 so here I need to pass the 23 as the value so in our case based on the calculations so it may return the 19 as the value it is going to it is going to select the 19 as the value so here simply I will say custom date and then I will say here to string that's it guys now after that so I need to pad the single quotation that means I need to write this particular data in the single quotation so that's the reason so here I'm writing single quotation so this is the closing single quotation in the similar way I need to write the another opening single quotation so that's the reason here I'll add single quotation and after that simply we have to close the this particular bracket so I will say here bracket so that's it guys we are done with creating the element also now what we will do is by using simply this particular locator that, that is element then we will click on the element so uh, firstly we have to use the frame because we have the date picker inside the frame and here I'll say locator and inside the locator I'm passing the element what we formatted just now by using the custom date and then so simply I'm calling a method called click here so that's it guys so we are done with the implementation so now it should select 19 as the value because current date is 22 22 minus 3 is 19 right so let's run the program and we will see the output so let me comment out selecting the today's date which is not required so let me summarize what we have done once again so firstly we are navigating to this URL then we are identifying the frame by using the frame we are clicking on the date selecting field and after that we are identifying the today's date so based on the today's date we are performing the some calculations here and based on the custom date then we are forming the locator by using that locator simply we are performing the click operation here so that's it guys so let's run the test and we'll see the output output So if you see here guys, so there is a some problem. We are not able to pass the proper data inside the data hyphen date attribute, right? So let's see what is the problem here. So here we missed to pass the await keywords for the line number 22 and line number 26. So let's pass the await keyword here so that it will get the promised value from the data hyphen date. And also I will pass the await keyword here for the line number 26 so that's it guys now let's rerun the playwright test now so it should select the 19 as the date so 12 19 2023 it should select if you see the date here so it is selecting the proper date say for example i want to select the today's date plus 3 that means it will let's say today day, today date is 22 and if i add 3 it will be 25 so it should select 12 25 and 2023 so let's run the test now and let's verify the output so if you see here so right now it is selecting the still 19 let me check what is the problem so here we have not added the plus sorry I missed it so this time it should select the 12 25 2023 so if you see here so it has selected 12 25 2023 so this is how you can select the custom dates in the playwright in this playwright tutorial we are going to see assertions in playwright there are two types of assertions one is hard assertion and second one is soft assertion so let's understand what is 
hard assertion. Say for example, we have a one test case that contains five steps. Say for example, I have written an assertion after the second step. In that case, if assertion got failed in the second step, that test will be terminate, terminated then and there itself. But in case of soft assertion, the execution will be happen till the fifth step basically. So soft assertions are nothing but, so these are the type of assertions. So whenever assertion got failed, so it will not stop the test execution. It will complete the test execution if you are using the soft assertion. If you are using the hard assertion, your test will be terminated when assertion got failed. So let's see the important assertions you will be using across the project. The very first one is URL. So we will see how to verify the URL and second one is title. How you can verify the title of the web page and the third one is text. For example, you want to validate a text displayed on the web page. So that can be validated by using the method called to have text. And next one is editable. So let's let's say for example we have a button. So we want to check whether that button is editable or not. Let's say we have the text box. So we will check whether text box is editable or not by using the to be editable method. And next one we have visible. So we will be using the to be visible. We will be checking the element is visible or not so that we can perform the next action. So it can be click or it can be entering some data into the element. And next one we have is enabled. So we will check whether element is enabled or not so that if it is enabled, we can perform the action on that web page element. And the seventh one we have is disabled. So many times we will be checking whether the element is disabled or enabled. So such kind of scenarios. So there might be a scenario after entering the data and we will be saving the record. And after that, we will be seeing that whether that data is editable or not, whether it is disabled or not. So that can be checked by using the to be disabled. And next one we have the empty to be empty method. So for example, we have the text box. So we'll check whether that particular text box is text box is empty or not by using the to be empty method. And the last one we have is, we have is to have count. So basically, let's say for example, we have identified a element and we have a, let's say five elements. So we have written XPath or CSS selector. So that matches with the five elements. So whenever I open the web page, all the five elements should be present in the web page, right? So that count can be asserted by using the to have count. So let's see all these examples in the real time web application. Now I will navigate to the VS code and let's create a quickly one spec file. So here I'll see the file name as assertions.spec.js and I will go to the one of the test and I will simply copy the test and I will come back to the assertions spec file. So I will keep the only playwright test skeleton. So let's update the test name as assertions in playwright. So that's it guys. Now let's see the scenario. So firstly, we will validate the URL, title and text. So here I have opened the google.com and here I will search with playwright by testers talk. So here I will take the some part of the URL and I will open the another tab. So this is the URL what we are using it. So after hitting the URL, we are getting the this Google search results, right? So let's use this URL and we will validate the this URL is correctly appearing or not. So firstly, I will add the URL. Let's navigate to the URL first. To assert anything, we have to use the. So let's say here I'll assert URL. So we have to use the one keyword called expect to verify anything. To get the URL, simply I am using the current page object followed by simply I am calling one method called to have URL. 
and inside this function simply we have to pass the expected value so i will pass the correct value this time so this is what we are expecting in this url and i will put some weight here i'll say await followed by page wait for timeout and here i'll pass some seconds that's it guys so if i run this test it should launch the browser and it should enter the url and it should validate the url also and if you see here our test is getting passed let's say for example i will remove some part of the url in the expected result and this time it will get failed because the actual url and the expected urls are not matching in this case and if you see here so this is the expected string and this is the actual string so those both both the strings are not matching so that's the reason our test is getting failed so this is the expected failure now let's see how to assert the title so if you see the title of this particular web page so it is displaying playwright by test test talk hyphen google search so let's assert the this particular web page title so here i'll say assert title so it is very simple guys same syntax we have to use it and here simply we have to call to the method called to have title so this function will get the current page title and here we have to add the expected value so expected value is playwright by tester stock after that there is a hyphen and followed by google search so let's add that text here so google search so that's it guys now let's run the test now and if you see here so our test is getting passed right say for example if i remove something here let's say i will remove by so this time our test will get failed because the titles will be not matching so whatever the actual and expected value will be not matching so if you see here expected and actual values are not matching so this is the expected failure now let's see how to validate the so here i'll say assert text say for example in this web page we will inspect this particular search text box and we will get the this particular text and we will validate with the our actual value so simply i will inspect the element and we will write a simple css selector by using that we will identify the element so here i'm writing just a single quotation and the brackets for the attribute and value and if you see here so it is matching with three elements but we will focus on the very first element so let's copy the css selector so this time we are asserting the text from the web page so here i'm using await followed by so expect keyword i'm using and inside this i'm using the page object dot so here i'm saying locator and inside the locator i'm adding the locator what we just copied it from the google and once we are having the locator so here i'm saying the first so this particular element was matching with three elements so that's the reason i want to find only first element and perform the action that's it guys so here we have the locator now so i want to verify this locator text right so that's the reason here i'm calling to the method called to have text and here we have to pass the expected value so this is the expected value so let's copy the playwright by tester stock that's it guys now let's run the test and it should compare the 
web element text and the expected text. And if you see here guys, so our test is perfectly working fine. So if I pass some incorrect data in the expected, that time it will not match the expected and actual value, then obviously our test will get failed. And if you see here, actual and expected values are not matching. So this is the expected failure. So that's it guys. So we have seen how to verify the URL, title and text. Now we will see how to use the to be editable, to be visible and to be enabled. So already we have identified the text box. We will see whether that particular text box is editable, visible or enabled or not. So here I'll say assert editable enabled and another one is visible so let's do all the three things in a single time so what i will do is simply i will take this particular element so this particular element is nothing but the search text box what we have identified just now So that's it guys. So here simply I'm calling to the one method called to be editable. If it is editable, then our test will be passed. If it is not editable, our test will get failed. So in our case, it is editable. So our test will get passed. In the similar way, we can use the to be visible. So basically we can check whether element is visible or not. By using that, we can perform the next set of actions. So here I'll say to be visible and in the similar way i will call to the another method called to be enabled so in our case so all the assertions will get passed because our text box is editable it is visible and it is enabled also right now let's run the test now and our test will pass And if you see here guys, so our test is perfectly working fine. So there are no failures also. Now let's see how to use to be disabled, to be empty and to have count. So basically disabled, we are verifying whether element is disabled or not. And we are using uh, to be empty to check the element is empty or not. And final one, we are checking the count. So let's see all, all three examples. So here I'll say assert, disabled, and followed by that empty we are checking the element is empty or not then we are checking the final one is count so we have the, we have already the locator that's the text box we have identified we'll check this text box is disabled or not so in our case it is enabled our test will get fail so that is fine so here it's said to be disabled so our test will find Oh, sorry our test will get fail because we are checking this element is disabled or not but in our case it is got enabled the expected behavior is our test will get fail so our our element is active now and if you see here received is enabled and expected is disabled so this is the expected failure guys this is how you can use the to be disabled you can apply this to be disabled where you can see the element got disabled now let's use how to check the empty so if I, for example here i'm calling one method called to be empty so i'm using the same element i'm checking whether this element is empty or not in our case this element is not empty it has already some text in it 
the behavior of this particular assertion is it will get fail that is fine we can run it so you can check any text box where it is empty so in that case this assertion will get passed and if you see here guys so expected value is empty we are expecting empty as a text box but we are receiving not empty so here you can write after the bracket simply we can pass the dot not so here i'm checking not empty that particular text box right so if i run this test and this will work fine so previously we were checking only the text box is empty or not but this time we are checking text box should not be empty it should have some value so this time our test will get passed and if you see here our test is getting passed right so this is how you can use the to be empty method as well now let's see how to use the to have count if you see here guys so we have the one method called to have count so by using this one we can get the current page elements for example if we have located one element and if it is matching with multiple elements basically that will returns you the count of that element and then we can compare it by using the to have count so if you see the x path sorry we, if you see the css selector whatever we have written right so this css selector is matching with the three elements right and if you see the third element guys so this is the third element if you see here three of three and if i go a little bit up here right so this particular element is there inside the iframe so that's the reason the count is here only two and here i'm again using the same locator and this time i'm not using the first and after that here i'm calling to the method called to have count and inside that i'm passing the expected value as two that's it guys so our test will get passed because this particular locator is matching with only two elements as i said the third element is there inside the another iframe so we should not we will be not able to identify the third element so that's the reason count of this locator is two let's run the test now and it should find the locator count and it should match with the expected count value and if you see here so we have the sum error so directly we have to pass the number not a string so that's the reason let's remove the quotations that is fine now i will rerun the test once again so if you see here guys our test is perfectly working fine right say for example if i pass three number here so our test will get fail because the element is matching with only two elements And if you see here guys the expected value is three but we received only two from the web page so this is the expected failure guys so this is how you can use the all different types of assertions in the playwright now let's see how to use soft assertions in playwright so far you have seen all the assertion examples with respect to the hard assertion right so let's see a couple of examples for the soft assertion as well so as i said so when we apply the soft assertion so our test execution will continue it will not terminate there exactly right so our test is working fine right now so i'm just running the test so there are no failures in the playwright test so all the assertions are working perfectly fine right so intentionally i will fail this assertion i will run the test so where we are asserting the url i'm failing it and our test will fail in the verification of the url 
and if you see here guys so it is getting failed it is not able to match the expected url and the actual url so this is the expected failure so what you can do is simply to apply the soft assertion you need to say after the expect so simply you need to call to the one method called here called soft that's it so here i have called to the soft method after the expect and if i run this test right so it will make only this particular step as a failure and it will run the rest of the steps in the test so that's the beauty of the soft assertion but still our test will be getting failed in that particular step and if you see here guys our test got failed in while validating the url so let's look at the report now so i will go to the report and let me open the index.html report and if you see this test right guys only our test is getting filled in this particular step but if you see the rest of the steps so rest of the steps are perfectly working fine right now let's apply another soft assertion so here i will make so while validating the text i will pass the incorrect expected value so our test will get fail here also right so that's the reason here i will apply the soft assertion in playwright so that's it guys so i will run the test and this time our test will get fail in two steps so previously our test was getting failed in the only one step and rest of the steps were getting executed successfully So that's it guys so here you can see that expected and actual results and i will go back to the playwright test report and i will refresh it so let's go to the steps and if you see here also it is listing down the first assertion failure first step failure and this is the second step failure and if you see the steps also of the step sorry test the first failure is there here while validating the url and the second failure is there in the while validating the text so this is how you can apply the soft assertion in the playwright in this playwright tutorial we are going to see what is watch mode and how to use watch mode in playwright so let's understand what is watch mode first so watch mode is nothing but so whenever i am making some changes in the playwright test right so after making the changes automatically that test execution will be triggered after making the changes and once you save the file automatic test ex execution will be triggered if you switch on the watch mode to the any spec file or any test so let's see how to use the watch mode now so i will go to the vs code and here i will navigate to the terminal so let's open the playwright test runner first so here i'll write npx followed by playwright test and followed by hyphen hyphen ui this command will open the playwright test runner if you see guys so it has opened the playwright test runner so it lists down all the spec file and all the all your automation tests so here i'm selecting one of the spec file called assertions dot spec.js so if i select this particular test right so if i come right side so there are three icons and if you see here guys so there is a one icon called watch so before we switch on this watch mode so let's run the test and we'll see whether this test is working fine or not then later we will switch on the watch mode and we will make the changes to the, this particular test and we will see whether it is playwright is automatically triggering the test or not so if you see here guys so our test is perfectly working fine and also here you can see the check mark and here you can see that so our test is passing one of one so here i will simply click on the eye icon that is the watch mode 
so if i click on that one so it is turned on now so if you see the other playwright test so these are the automation tests so it is not enabled with the watch mode so only this particular test is switched on with the watch mode so i will go to this particular spec file and i will make the changes automatically this test will be triggered for the execution so i will go to the vs code and this is the spec file what we are referring it so here i'm writing very simple statement here so console dot log so simply i will write some statement inside the log method so i will say assertions in playwright test is running that's it guys so i have saved it and if i come back here so if you see here guys so it has started the execution because i did not actually click on the run for this particular test so automatically test execution is started so this is the beauty of the watch mode guys so i will go back to the vs code once again so i will make small change here and if you see here guys i have not saved this particular file right if you see here so this file is not saved yet and i will go to the playwright test runner so this execution is not started now so let me save it and we'll come back and we'll see the execution once again i have saved the file and if you see here guys so it is already queued for the execution and also execution is started and if you see here on the right side window guys so our test is getting executed and also here you can see so our test is getting passed so this is how you can use the watch mode in playwright in this playwright tutorial we are going to see how to enable traces so whenever the test got failed so we will add the more information about the test execution life cycle so these traces will be added into the playwright test report where we will be seeing all these information so we can see all what are the actions done metadata console data logs network details and also we can see the screenshots with respect to the time frame also so now i will go to the vs code and here i will quickly create a one spec file so here i will give the spec file spec file name as failed test dot spec dot js that's it i will go to the one of the test and simply i will copy the test and i will go inside the just now created test and i will paste it so intentionally i will fail this test and we will check the playwright test report whether test failure traces are added or not so we have to modify one flag in the configuration file then we will get the traces added into the playwright test report now we have not enabled it so you will not find the any trace information and if you see here guys so our test is getting failed so we it is not able to match the actual string and the received string so this is the expected failure and if i go to the playwright report i will open the index.html report and if you see here guys so this, our test got failed and if i scroll down only we have the screenshot that's it right so we will see how to add the trace information as well where you can see lots of details about the test execution life cycle so i will go back to the vs code so you need to add the one flag called so under the define configuration so you need to go inside the use object so there is the one flag called trace colon and here we can pass multiple values so if you have enabled retry mechanism you can keep this particular value otherwise so for demo purpose i'm editing it so simply you can select the retain on failure so if you are not enabled retry mechanism simply you can keep the retain on failure so that's it guys so this particular flag you need to update it in your playwright configuration file and then you can close it so here i'm using the terminal to run the test now 
So I will clear all this data. That's it guys. Now I will run the this particular spec file fail test dot spec dot js file from the terminal. So here I will use npx followed by playwright test hyphen hyphen headed and then I will specify the our spec file name fail test dot spec dot js. So that's it guys. Now I am executing the spec file and when test got failed right it should attach the trace information to the playwright test report. So previously playwright was not doing it. We have enabled that particular flag. So now it will attach us the trace information. And also automatically it is going to open the report guys and if you see here guys so our test got failed so this is the expected failure right if i scroll down a little bit down so here you can see where exactly this test got failed and also you can see the screenshot and if you scroll down here so there is another section called traces right so let's click on the traces and if you see here guys in the top you can see the time frames based on the time frames you will be seeing the screenshot right so you can verify all the screenshot and also here you can see the test and the respective test steps so what are the actions it has performed here right so if you select any test and on the right side you can see the screenshot also so here i'm selecting the test step and if you see here guys there is another section action and before and after so before means here i have selected the very first step so before means so before entering this url so you can see the what is the screenshot of the browser so browser was very blank that's the reason you will be seeing the blank screenshot and once it is navigated to this particular step or once it is executed the first step you can see what is a screenshot like what was the web page displayed right so you can select the step and you can see the before and after what happened here you can see the respective screenshots also and also you can see the metadata so when test ex execution started and browser details and how many actions are done or how many events are done all those metadata you can check inside the metadata section and coming to the below section so here you can see the call details say for example if i selected one of the step from the test so it will display what what is the call made you can see all the call details coming to the logs so it, it will display all the logs what is what are the logs it has created during the test execution so coming to the error information so it will display all the error details what is the reason our test got failed and coming to the console so this console is very much similar to the what you see in the browser guys so it has all the details console details and coming to the network so here you can see what are the calls it has made and these two tabs you'll be seeing it in the web browser as well console and network network tab so all those details you can find it here coming to the source so it has the source code like we have written the test right by using the javascript so that source code you can find it here and also you can see the where exactly our test got failed also and also it is displaying the all the error information here right by using that we can easily track it and coming to the last section that's the attachment so here you will be finding the screenshot where exactly our test got failed so this is how we can verify the traces when playwright test got failed and also you can verify all these details in the playwright test runner as well in the previous tutorial i have showed how to use the playwright test runner so all these sections are available in the playwright test runner as well when you are running it manually any playwright test